tutorial you will learn how to make a complete car destruction simulation for visual effects using blender i actually made already a tutorial about this topic one year ago but now i am back with a completely new workflow that is much much better for three reasons my new workflow is 100% working in real time the deformations now are more solid and stable and most importantly you can drive your car like in a game I made two versions of this tutorial. The basic version is the one that you are watching right now. Instead, if you want to go for a complete full car destruction simulation, then consider joining my Patreon in which you can find that version of this tutorial. I'm gonna use this car model that I modified it properly in order to have a nice starting point for physics simulation. Before making any physics simulation, you should prepare your model properly. And more exactly, there are 16 things that you should do in order to prepare your car properly. And because I don't like to repeat myself, I made a separated tutorial that you can find in my Patreon, in which you can find all these 16 tips collected for you in just 12 minutes of tutorial. You can also find this car model in two versions. There's the basic version that is like this, like only the body and the four tires. And that instead of the advanced version includes all the separated parts that are ready if you want to go for the advanced destruction. However, you can perfectly go on following this tutorial with your own model of a car. I just want you to notice this. In this scene I am using 46,000 vertices more or less, which is crucial. Your model needs to be as much low poly as possible. And especially one of the things that I show you in that tutorial is how it's possible to reduce the geometry by six times without affecting the visual quality. You can see for example in this case I was able to reduce the geometry a lot but these two versions of the same model look exactly the same. So I eventually consider to join my Patreon because I really recommend to watch that tutorial. Not only that, because by doing that you are also getting the regularly posted tutorials and you are also contributing in my research in Blender. So the first thing to do is to check the orientation of the car. If you use this button here, try to go in the front view. You can see here front orthographic view and you should see the front part of the car. If not, you have to rotate your car properly. Otherwise, it's not going to work properly. Then. A very important choice that we have to do. If you know that you are going for a car crash, some deformation or stuff like that, the auto move is not good for the parts that are gonna deform. For example, the car body. Reason for this is that uh, if you have a mesh that is deforming, that has also the auto smooth active, that's gonna generate some nonsense glitch in cycles. This is a very known limitation of cycles. So the fix for this is Select the parts that are going to deform, for example the body of the car in this case. Just go here under Object Data Properties, all the way down under Geometry Data, and click on Clear Custom Split Normal Data. If you don't see this button, by the way, it's super OK, then turn off the Auto Smooth, and instead right click and Shade Smooth, then go in the Modifiers tab, and the Modifier, Edge Split Modifier and play with the angle of the edge split until you see that you are getting the uh, smooth shading not in the entire car but only in the parts that you need just the minimum is necessary to preserve these defining lines of the car you know just increase a little bit and constantly check all around the car that everything is going fine all right something like this probably a little bit more all right we need to apply this edge split modifier by going on this arrow and apply this is gonna increase the geometry a lot like uh, almost double so you can see vertex count now is 80,000. That's why I insist a lot with starting with a very low poly version of the car, because in this part we have increased a lot of the geometry. So this is a reasonable amount of vertices based on my test in my very weak uh, i7 processor CPU. However, you don't need to make the edge split step for all the non-deformable parts like the tires and stuff, only for the deformable parts. 
At this point, we are ready for rigging the car. And for doing that, I'm going to use RBC Aaron. So go get RBC Aaron for Blender that you can find on Blender Market and just downloaded the free version. You can perfectly follow the tutorial using the free version. Eventually, you can decide for the Pro, but it's not necessary. So once you get the zip file, then just go in Blender and edit preferences, Aaron's under install and find your zip file and just uh, click it twice and then you click on OK. Once this is done, just ensure that uh, the checkbox is activated here and click on save preferences. Still that we are here, you have to know that there is a problem in Blender when playing with physics simulation. Whenever you undo some operation pressing Ctrl Z, Blender is probably going to crash. To avoid this, you can go under Interface and activate Developer Extras. Then go to Experimental and activate the Yundo Legacy. This is going to be a little bit slower when you undo some operation pressing Ctrl Z, but is preventing Blender to crash when you have a lot of physics simulations. All right, we can close this window. With the mouse here, if you press N, RBC, Aaron, I'm going to select all these five parts i need to select five elements so just check it twice objects five on five nice then rbc add-on i could perfectly make the one click solution that comes with the paid version but i will show you the workflow that comes with the free version so just choose the car and then add rig and this is the part in which we assign the parts so this is the body of the car so i'm going to click on vehicle body this is the frontal right tire and so click on frontal right tire this is the back right tire and this is the back left tire and this is the front left tire once all the parts are assigned you have to go here and click on generate rig and boom you have a drivable car if you play the animation you can see that uh, already some physics are starting to happen in the paid version you can also go under controls and keyboards and uh, if you click on start you can perfectly play with your car in real time using the keyboard and just pressing on the keyboard v a s d like a game so this is fantastic by the way the point of this tutorial is not to play games of course is to make visual effects for your movie I'm going to create a sphere that is going to collide with this car. Move it up a little bit. With this sphere, I'm going to go in the physics properties and I'm going to make this sphere a rigid body. It's going to be passive and animated. So activate this checkbox so that we can first play the animation and then select the sphere and press G while the animation is running and start hitting the car and look at that. Now, two very precious tips that I want to give you. For faster response and for a more stable simulation, you can go under here, scene properties, reach body world, and look at these two values. So first of all, sub steps per frame. I'm going to decrease this to four, which is very low. But in my experience, very low sub steps gives way much a more stable simulation without any glitching or exploding parts. And then also the solver iteration. We don't really need 48 solver iteration. I'm going to decrease this to 12. And now the viewport should be much, much more responsive and more stable up here you can check the frame rate our priority now is to have a real-time response during the entire workflow I'm gonna constantly check sub step per frame and solver iteration because sometimes the error tends to change them also when you close blender and reopen it you can find these two values reset now another important thing if you don't want to compromise anything just always go on frame zero when you want to tweak something now let's uh, have a quick check on uh, how the physics is going so it's pretty it's pretty okay the speed maybe it's a little bit slow compared to real life so in the uh, scene properties i'm gonna increase the speed a little bit 1.6 maybe usually works fine all right this is more realistic now so i'm gonna stay inside view all right for the deformation i'm gonna hack a little bit the Aaron workflow so if you notice right now we have the model of the car and there is also another mesh that is surrounding the car that is created in automatic by rbc Aaron. but unfortunately this mesh is not selectable so let's try to find it in the outliner here if you press Control space to maximize full screen this view i'm gonna find the rigid body of the car that is exactly that mesh there we go vehicle body rb rb stays for rigid bodies you can see many rigid bodies like here here and here created by rbc add-on so this one is the one in which i am interested this icon is turned off which means that we cannot select it turn this icon on and finally control space to go back and finally can select this mesh now let's go in wireframe mode with transparency activated we can go in edit mode and ensure that you are in vertices mode by clicking here press a to select all the vertices and also check that the transformation pivot point is set on median point now what i want to do is to decrease the size of this but in specific direction for example i'm going to press s and y so that we are scaling the car only in uh, in the length direction i'm going to escape 
from this operation because I want you to notice two things actually. The first thing to notice is that we are scaling in edit mode. It's very important. We are not in object mode. So we are scaling the vertices. So let's do this. S and then Y. The second thing to notice is that the color will start to rotate somehow. Don't worry for that. When you are done, let's do the same for the height. So S and then Z and the more you scale it and the more you see that is self-adjusting the rotation. So just decrease it until you see that the rotation is okay. Our goal is to have more or less the same distance between here, between here, here and here. Now let's check also from the front. You can navigate using these buttons and then S and X this time. And look at that. So the rigid body should be smaller compared to the real model of the car. Something like uh, this should work fine. Now we can exit from edit mode and let's go on object mode. I'm gonna create now for the deformation a giant cube and uh, make this cube very big like this. It should surround the entire car, make it more or less in the center. Very, very big like this, don't worry. Then I'm gonna go in a solid view. So with this cube selected, and first of all, I'm gonna press Ctrl A, apply scale. Then I'm gonna go in edit mode. We select everything by pressing A, right click and subdivide, and subdivide again, and subdivide the third time. We can exit from edit mode. And I'm gonna give a bunch of modifiers now. The first is gonna be a subdivision surface with a level of two for the viewport. After the subdivision, I'm gonna give a shrink wrap modifier, this one here. I'm gonna take this peak tool because I want to set the target that is gonna be the car body, which is this one here. Once you click that, you can see that uh, the cube is uh, shrink wrapped to the car. And to check properly what is going on, you have to go here in this arrow, choose random. So we have two meshes here, but they have the same color, more or less. You can change the color by simply renaming this mesh. And still that we are here, I'm going to rename this Deform Body. And it should change color. Not really. I'm going to change the name again. Deform Body. There we go. You can see now two different colors and we can clearly see what's going on. What I wanted to do after the shrink wrap is to check the geometry. If you go here, this arrow and activate the wireframe, you can see that the geometry is a complete mess. So after the shrink wrap, for this reason, I'm going to give a remesh modifier. In the remesh, we're going to play with the voxel size here. If you hold the shift and start dragging this number, you can increase or decrease more precisely the amount of geometry. So this is too much high resolution. It's going to be very slow. This is too much low resolution. But when I have something like 2000 faces in my test, it works really good. By the way, later we're going to have to check the total amount of geometry that we are creating. Now, a lot of car parts are left outside in the shrink wrap modifier we can offset a little bit by playing with this function here and at this point we can turn off the wireframe so that we can check how it's going and we have to check that there are no parts left outside like here so we can also right click and shade smooth doesn't work so we can go in the remesh modifier and activate the smooth shading play with the offset of the shrink wrap a little bit until the entire car is covered. By the way, if some parts are left outside, we can perfectly adjust it later. After that, if you look from the left side, you can see that we have some, some uh, we can say, hard corners like this. These are not good because during the deformation, they are going to self-intersect like this, which are not good. So to prevent this, we need a smoother shape for this deformed mesh. For this reason, after the remesh, I am going to give also a smooth modifier. In the smooth modifier, we can increase the repeat option that is here let's actually increase it to the maximum that is 30. now you can see that we have a way much smoother shape but we need to shrink wrap a little bit more until everything is covered and all right now starting from the top i'm going to start to apply all the modifiers it's very important that you start from the first that is the higher here so this arrow and apply for a faster apply with the mouse here, I'm going to simply press Ctrl A, Ctrl A, Ctrl A. Now it's time to fix eventual parts that are left outside, like here you can see. So it's convenient to isolate this mesh and the car only. So try to select the car, that is this mesh here, and holding Shift and select also this mesh here. And then with these two meshes selected, let's go under View, Local View, Toggle, Local View. So from now on, I'm going to do this from the keyboard by pressing Numpad Slash. Whenever you want to go back, just press again numpad slash like this right we are seeing only these two meshes now with this deform mesh selected i'm gonna go in sculpt mode inflate which i use this tool here inflate to inflate all the parts that need some adjustment like this we can press f to increase the size of the brush just a little bit of inflate somewhere where it needs this is a very quick operation by the way once everything is perfectly covered inside this mesh you can exit from sculpt mode Go in object mode and press again numpad slash. All right, now at this point, we need to check the amount of geometry
geometry that we have created in the deform mesh. So let's go in edit mode and look at here. Vertices 3000. This is too much. I'm gonna probably decimate it a little bit. Add a modifier, decimate. The best way to use a decimate is to use the arm subdivide because it preserves a good topology. Face count. My goal is to decrease this face count to something like 2000. So increase the decimate two times. There we go, 2000. And apply. Let's check again. After that, we probably have to adjust a little bit more some parts that are outside. Now the deform mesh is ready. I'm gonna go under object properties all the way down under viewport display. Display as I'm gonna choose wire. I'm gonna select the car model that is this one here. I'm gonna go in the modifiers and give a mesh deform modifier. This one here. From the mesh deform modifier, I'm gonna take the peak tool and I'm gonna choose the mesh deform body for the deformation as a target. And look at that, we can now bind the car. This is gonna take some seconds depending on your machine. And finally, from now on, every transformation that happens in this deform body will be automatically transferred to the car. Now, before proceeding, it's very important to save the project. I'm gonna select now the deform mesh modifiers, displace modifier. It's gonna go crazy, don't worry, just click on new texture here. So just maybe decrease the strength of the displays a little bit like this. So you know what, from now on, I want to see my car. I don't need really much to see the deform mesh anymore. So object properties and viewport display display as I'm gonna set this on bounds. So we are still working on the deform mesh. That is this one here, you can see it. But finally, I can also see my car model. So let's focus on the deform mesh now. So modifiers, we have the displays in the texture panel here now. I'm gonna expand it and the type of texture, I'm gonna choose clouds. Play a little bit with the size of the clouds that is here. Too small is not good, too much spiky. Also too big is not good. And I'll just try to find something that you like. We can play a little bit between the strength of the displacement. Don't exaggerate, but I also want that when this sphere is gonna hit the car, I wanted to see the metal that kinda get down like this. So to make this possible, we simply increase the mid level of the displacement. Look at that. So we're gonna have something like uh, like this. Something that allows the geometry to go inside a little bit. It's a good idea to have the geometry that goes a little bit inside the rigid body. So you can see this is your mesh and your mesh now is going inside the rigid body. This is a cool idea because this is avoiding the intersection problem with the floor, for example, when the car is gonna roll down. Here it is staying a little bit outside, but uh, you know what? For now, I just don't care about it. I uh, will just see later how this will go. So. If you play the animation, you can see that uh, the deform mesh is not following the car. Look at this, a start and the deform mesh is staying here. This is not fine, so select the deform mesh and holding shift as a second element is very important the order in which you select these two elements. Select also the rigid body and then press Ctrl P, set parent to object. And now if I start to play with the car, and now it's following. This is very important, otherwise the deformation is not gonna happen correctly. Now, select the deform mesh, and I wanna go in the physics properties and activate dynamic paint. This is gonna be a canvas, add canvas, activate anti-aliasing for a smoother painting, surface type, weight, and under output, expand the output and click on this plus button. So we have created a vertex group that we can finally link in the displacement modifier here, vertex group. I can find my DP weight vertex group. This means that uh, the displacement will happen only in the dynamic paint vertex group. And in the modifiers tab, we have to invert this order. So take the dynamic paint from here and drag it before the displacement. And now this is the right order of the two modifiers. The select the sphere, Go in the physics properties, activate the dynamic paint. It is gonna be a brush and click on add brush. Make it a mesh volume plus proximity and we are good to go. Play the animation, take the sphere, press G and now we are affecting the car. You can clearly see it. And now it's just a matter of tweaking all the options with the sphere selected. We can decrease the distance on something very low like 0.02. Play the animation, let's try again. Now this is colliding properly. You can have fun smashing your car and this is a lot of fun because it's happening all in real time. Whenever you want to adjust the deformation, you can pause the animation and select the deform mesh and adjust the displacement as you prefer. It's also a cool idea to go in the texture tab and decrease the under colors and decrease the contrast of the texture so that you can avoid this type of ugly spikes, especially in the front. If you decrease the contrast, you have a lower difference between the higher part and the lower parts of the displacement. We are deforming the car in real time, like a game, which is fantastic. The frame rate is still 24. If you want the deformation to 
happen also when the car rolls down on the floor. Let's do this. On frame zero, I'm going to try to select the floor. The floor is not selectable, so we have to find it in here. So with the mouse here, press control space. And in the RBC collection, there we go, RBC ground, this mesh here, activate this icon. Control space. And finally, we can select this floor and finally go in the physics properties. Activate dynamic paint. This is going to be a brush add brush we don't really have a volume in this mesh because it's a flat plane so we can set the source type to only proximity it's gonna be fine distance very low distance like the sphere 0.02 and look at that, now the floor is affecting the deformation. You can see that sometimes there's a little bit of lagging between uh, the uh, deformed parts. So whenever you have a very fast moving object like this, you might want to have a precise control of the dynamic paint for the deformed mesh by increasing uh, the uh, substeps per frame, like here, substeps, just one or two sometimes can help. In this case, it's not really necessary, but when you start to have very fast moving objects, probably some substeps are gonna help. Now, let's suppose that you are happy with your physics simulation and so it's time to bake it. Let's suppose that you have a timeline that uh, is long like uh, 1000 frames. So with the deformed mesh selected, I'm going to go in the physics properties, dynamic paints, and you can see in the end frame here, I'm going to match it with the timeline. So 1000 and also I'm going to do the same in the scene properties here, expand the cache and the frame of the cache is not matching the timeline. So I'm going to adjust it. At this point, the correct way to bake all the dynamics is this in the Aaron, I'm going to press start, which is different from playing the animation. Pay attention, start and start driving the car like this. So at this point, I have interrupted the animation pressing the button escape on the keyboard because this is a point in which I don't need anymore to drive the car. I can just let it go and follow the physics simulation dynamics. So I want to save how I have driven the car. And so just go in the scene properties, cache, and click on the button current cache to bake. This button will basically save all the dynamics that happen from here until here. Instead from this frame, I'm going to simply press the space bar and just let the car go whatever he wants to go. And just let the animation go till the last frame of the timeline. When the animation is starting to loop again, at this point, just interrupt it immediately with the escape button. And instead go in the scene properties, rich body world settings, and just click on bake all dynamics. And this is basically saving all these dynamics in the computer. All right, so the bake is finished. And if you scroll through the timeline, you can see the car driving and jumping and whatever. From now on, whenever you want to make some adjustment in the physics, you need to first click on delete all bakes and make all your adjustments and then remake this little process. At this point, turn off the visibility of the deform mesh for both the viewport and for the render especially. Otherwise, when you are going to render, you're going to see that mesh covering the car. Now, there are a lot of uh, additional things that you could do, but uh, my new motto is keep it simple. So I will keep this tutorial very simple. It's up to you to play more with the options or you can decide to join my Patreon in order to have the more advanced discussion. Alright, thanks for watching and have a good one.